Imagine you are Muzan, the Demon King. After a fight with the Sun Breather Yorichi, you're left with only a slither of your true power and have just 100 days to reclaim your power and get rid of Sun Breathing once and for all. Oh, you're joking, man. <laughs> I had been thrown into a midway fight against Yorichi the Sun Breather. <laughs> and I had no choice but to run away. I ran into a corner with only half a heart left. And as Yorichi approached me with intentions of killing me, I split my body into as many pieces as possible. In this confusion, Yorichi tried to take out as many parts of my body as possible, while I used this to make my getaway. A long time had passed after this encounter with Yorichi, and I woke up fully regenerated on what I'll call day one. I had some blood lying around, which I picked up and realized I was very weakened, and it was the middle of the day. Despite this, I headed on out and drank some blood to try to get even a slither of my original strength back. I began getting materials needed to survive, such as oak wood, and stayed under trees so I didn't burn to death. I made my first tool, that being a wooden pickaxe, and headed down to a nearby cave. In this cave, I got some cobblestone, simply so that I could upgrade my tools from a wooden pickaxe to a stone pickaxe, sword, and axe. Then after that, started mining some ores, I got some coal for smelting later on, and then grabbed some iron, and even after all this, it was still daytime. So I got some more iron, made a furnace, and began smelting my iron since I decided that since I'm so weakened now, I'd have to rely on normal human protection and made some iron armor. Eventually night fell and I was able to head outside without cover. I drank the rest of my blood and then tried to figure out how I'd actually get out of this ravine I was in. My bright idea was to make a bucket with my remaining iron, grab some water at a nearby puddle or something, and try to swim up the side of the ravine. Turns out Muzan cannot swim. Uh, water just doesn't work anymore then? Okay. But luckily, I found some sand that when broken, led to a lake, and I was able to, like, walk out, I guess. It was random, but a building spawned in my head. I ignored this and began killing cows. I then encountered my first demon, and to my surprise, I didn't get absolutely obliterated. We kinda just traded love taps until I won. After this, I began kicking some food, and then heard extras to my left. Enemies spotted. Taking these demon slayers out was very easy, which helped me remind even after being weakened, I am still the Demon King Muzan. So these personalityless fodder couldn't take me down. I had a little jug and found a crow that could talk. After forcing food down its beak, it decided to give in and be my friend. I think it likes me. Some time passed and I eventually found another demon who, when I took it down, actually dropped a demon hand. So this would be my very first upgrade as a demon. Basically, this demon hand does nothing but increase my hit reach, which is actually surprisingly goaded. It made my life a lot easier. Though, I wasn't paying attention to the time and caught the sunrise. Luckily, there was a huge cave nearby that I was able to run to before burning. In this cave, I actually found diamonds, which is pretty sassy, so I quickly upgraded my stone tools to some iron tools, but what I didn't realize was that my first boss fight was just below me. I got the three diamonds I saw before, and then finally noticed Genya stood there with his Glock. Fighting Genya wasn't incredibly difficult, as with my strength as a demon increased from day one, I was able to tank most attacks at this point. The problem was the fight took place in water, but eventually I slapped him across the nose and was now as strong as Low Moon 6. I left the cave feeling extremely confident. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh my god, that was way too close. After nearly ending this video before the four minute mark, I headed on out of the cave looking for anything useful and eventually made my way into the mission number one mountain. I had a run with Igoro straight away, which I knew I wouldn't survive, so luckily I got away. Though I was able to take down some old hatchers and Nishirin swordsmiths, and then had a second duel with Genya. Though I had some help from Upper Moon 6 Daki, who went into a second form. I'm not sure I should be worried about this. Anyway, I found Uradaki and brutally beat up this old man in a one-sided brawl until he kicked the bucket. Inside his house, I found a water-breathing Nichiren sword and the mask he was wearing. Oh, dude, his mask is in here. I look really, really bad. Luckily for me though, inside the old man's bedroom was his futon, which would help me change the day from night instead of hiding in caves. It was a stormy night out, and to make things even scarier... You're welcome. Your dreams are safe. Anywho, I randomly got low in 5 even though I didn't do anything. Turns out it was the Rip Demon. I don't need your help, man. And then I found Gyome fighting some demons. Oh, he's mad. Help me, help me. Oh, he's still coming. <laughs> anyway, soon after I came across Sabato, who was actually pretty easy to knock out. And then finally, I found what I was looking for. 
Kamenu. Unfortunately for me, Kamenu was not as easy as I thought they would be. The only reason I won this fight, I believe, is that I was able to counter and block the swings coming from them with my demon hand. But eventually, I took down Kamenu and got my very first blood demon art. With this new blood demon art from Kamenu, I was finally becoming an actual demon worthy threat rather than just the king of pop Michael Jackson with a fancy arm horn or something. I began heading to the next mountain where Rui lived, but came across a small house belonging to the Kamado family. The back of this house was some sort of ritual looking practice of some sort. I really couldn't place my finger on it. I then heard a voice from inside the house and decided it wouldn't hurt to do what any normal person would do. And that, of course, is murdering the entire family. I feel like that was a tiny bit overkill. I'm sure these are just extras anyway. There's nothing to worry about. I then began burning down the house just for safe measure. I really hope this doesn't start a really well animated anime with cracking opening songs. That wouldn't be ideal. A while passed after my wholesome visit to the Cabanos and I noticed some of my blood embedded in the stones around the area. I began mining up all my blood, which there was quite a few, and reached my limit of demon power. I then uncovered a secret house, hung to demons that, to my surprise, were not under my curse. Of course I had to kill them, as I couldn't have random demons uttering my name. The house was now empty, and just like the Kamados, to be safe, I burnt down the entire house. After that, I found myself at my lower moon fire's home. This place was swarming with demon slayers, which kind of disappointed me, but because of this, I became as strong as a lower moon four, and now had these demon horns coming out of my head. I kept slaughtering every demon slayer I came across, getting more and more precise with my methods of killing, using every demon related ability to its full potential, until I reached the power of a lower moon three. With this, I'd be strong enough to take down my lower moon five, Rui. As expected, Rui was a disappointment to me and probably his imaginary family as well, as I took him out with little resistance and finished the job with ease. But on the bright side, Rui's demon art is actually quite good, just wasted on Rui himself. Using these new powers I gained, I gained the strength of a lower moon too. And then, soon after, met Rui's family, who didn't seem too happy with the murder of Rui, but the attempt was admirable, I suppose. I wonder if they'll mind if I stay here. Eh, I'm sure they won't mind. As night fell, I left Rui's home and encountered Kanao, who tried their best to damage me, so I at least had respect for the attempt, but eventually she realized who I was a bit too late and died for the sake of making me as strong as a lower than one. After this encounter, I found some small lively village surrounded by sakura trees. I headed on in, and luckily for me, no one seemed to notice that I was a demon. My Michael Jackson disguise was immaculate. I began rubbing everything I could from the chest, this being Japanese foods, wheats, iron, and golds. I am basically making this village go bankrupt. I'm a pretty great guy, you know? And honestly, everything was looking up until someone had somehow realized I was a demon. Not only that, but I realized I was Muzan. No. To avoid attention, I created a demon who started murdering nearby villagers, which meant this main character looking demon slayer had to deal with that first, which gave me the perfect amount of time to disappear and get to a place where I could think clearly. But I couldn't shake the feeling of Yurichi after seeing that demon slayer. No. I gathered my senses and decided to just get back on track with my goal, to get as strong as my former self. I decided the best way to do this was to spend the rest of my days at the Mugen Train Biome, where all demon slayers and demons decide to fight for some reason, which sped up my process becoming stronger tenfold. But I overestimated my power by a lot, and fighting Hashras was no simple task for me. I was still weak, as I didn't have all the blood demon arts necessary to take on certain enemies. Where I can barely see Uzui, man he's so fast. Again, the sun began to rise, and this time, I didn't know where to go. I spotted a nearby house and made a break for it. Before I reached the house, I fell into a hole, and in said hole, I very nearly burnt to death. I got into the house eventually and placed down my futon, and then I realized I had been holding myself back with inferior armor. Since, if you're unaware, the Demon Slayer uniform has greater protection than iron armor. Anyway, I headed on back outside to continue getting stronger. I decided I wanted to try to get Enmu's Blood Demon Art, and since I was so much stronger than a mere lower moon now, Enmu was very, very easy to take down. Even his train form went down at about 4 normal attacks, and with that, Enmu had been slaughtered. 
All right, enemy down. I go into a fight with Hyra, where I gain the ability to summon my Demon's Landmark, which would definitely help in becoming stronger. And then I gain the ability to become a walking dog. Oh yeah, man, let's go. Um, I'm an animal now. I then took on Kenroji. This fight again was pretty easy as I'm very efficient at clashing and countering normal attacks from anyone. And that combined with an upper moon's blood demon art is very overpowered. Upon taking down Kenroji, I got the strength of my upper moon 4. And then after killing a ton of demon slayers, I gained the strength of an upper moon 3. Okay, upper rank 3, let's go. I then took on Gyoko, which wasn't too difficult, but despite being nowhere near as strong as me, his second form continues to impress me, as he does move so fast that I cannot react. But either way, he got taken down and I was starting to really look like a Demon King now. Using Enmu's Demon Art gave me the ability to have Demon Slayers killed without me needing to do anything at all, which was a really good power rush. This eventually led to me getting the power of an Upper Moon 2. Oh, upper rank 2. I didn't, I didn't even do anything. Since I had the power of an upper moon 2, I took on Hantengu, who actually did do a good amount of damage to me. But we were interrupted by Hashram by the name of Shinazagawa. But after fighting Hantengu, he wasn't that hard to deal with and take down, to be honest. The real challenge was fighting up my upper moon 3, Akaza. Despite me being stronger than an upper moon 3, he still managed to give me a really good fight. But eventually, my end ability managed to get in some lethal blows, and with that, partnered with my endless flurry of attacks together, my arms and I cut off Akaza's head, and eventually took down Upper Moon 3, Akaza. Right after this fight, I found my Upper Moon 2, Doma, which I can't lie, I really cheesed this fight since Rui can damage without aggroing, so Doma was extremely easy for me to take down. I kind of felt bad though, honestly, I cannot lie. Anyway, daytime rose while I was still out this time, so I went and headed back to the house to get back to my futon. Turns out with all the strength I had spent ages gathering, I was now unable to use the arts of going to bed. But don't worry, with enough standing around, nighttime fell once again and I went to take on my greatest demon, Upper Moon 1, Kokushiba. I can't lie, I tried to cheese it, but I used the wrong Rui move, so this fight had to be fair and square. Luckily for me though, the fight was kind of glitched since my Doma moves for some reason took all the aggro from Kokushiba off of me and onto the moves instead, giving me time to heal and deal damage, and with some abuse of the discovery, I was able to get Kokushibo into his final form and then eventually take him down. Now that I had taken down all my demons and gotten Kokushibo's sword, I practiced against the nearby hatchers in the area and it was safe to say they had no chance of possibly defeating me. I even wore in Goku's head, so now, not only is he a donut, but now he's in the Nosuke mask as well. That is how powerful I am. I visited my castle after years and years of hiding to take on my final challenge, my former self. If I won this fight against the former me, I'd be able to regain my powers before I was weakened by Yorichi, all those years ago. This fight was obviously very balanced as I'm spiritually fighting myself to regain my strength. But the Muzan I am today has a wider range of abilities to that of a Muzan of the past, which I believe is what gave me the edge over my past self and eventually led to my victory over myself. During this fight, I was able to use my surroundings to my advantage. Mostly it was just me using the love to slowly burn myself alive and then pummeled myself until I did a good amount of damage. But even with doing that, my old self was still extremely strong and replied with even stronger attacks once I did large amounts of damage, as well as began entering my final form, which would make things even more difficult. But finally, I took myself down. And with the fight over, I was now truly Demon King Muzan. I now had my old demon abilities back, and they were stronger than ever. That being both my hand and my Demon King Blood Demon Art and a ridiculous amount of blood to truly become even more powerful than ever before. Bro, look how much stuff I got because of that, man. Oh my god, I have so much. I had a bank to the bind where the most killing took place to finally finish off all the demon slayers, but my confidence is way too high. As there is one thing, despite how powerful I may be, that I cannot defeat. I held off the demon slayers with these, but their intentions were to keep me, not to kill me. This was a fact I didn't realize until too late as I noticed the sun rising with nowhere for me to hide. 
In a frenzy, I killed every demon slayer around me and rushed to find Tanjiro, and I pumped as much of my Muzan blood into him as I possibly could. And then finally, I burnt to death from the sun. But I had created a monster. What's <laughs>